Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the worship of St. Paul's United Methodist Church, a compassionate community led and transformed by the Spirit. Thank you for joining us today on this All Saints Sunday. I am Reverend Becky Sweet, and I am honored to serve as your senior pastor. Our worship leadership, for whom we are grateful, includes our ushers and hospitality ministers, Gary Rith, our camera operator, David Kingsley, our technical director, Dick Tenney is our liturgist today, Maya Finkel is our song leader and choir director, and the chancel choir will be bringing us our special music. Molly McMillan is our pianist, Jamie Breedlove Crouch is our Loving Care Ministries Coordinator, and Dee Levine is our Church Administrative Assistant and Communications Coordinator, and the rest of the staff who all support the ministries of the church in their own way are listed in the bulletin. I extend a warm welcome to those who worship with us regularly, as well as to our visitors. If you are visiting with us on site, I would ask you to fill out one of our Connect cards that I might have some contact information where I can send you a thank you note for worshiping with us today. Also, for those who are worshiping on Facebook Live, whether you are a regular attendee or a visitor, I encourage you to scroll on down and leave a comment for others who are worshiping with you there today. And for those who are worshiping via our live streaming on the website's worship page, you can scroll all the way down to the bottom and find the virtual friendship pad, which you are invited to complete there. Also, there is a link on that page for our bulletin and worship music so that you may participate fully in our service. The additional candle which is lit in the lantern on the altar is to remind us to pray for peace all around the world. In Ukraine and Russia, in Israel and Palestine, in Armenia and Azerbaijan and all of the places in the world, including some of the African countries um, where violence is being experienced and the fear of violence becomes debilitating for folks. Please pray for peace in all of these situations. We are so grateful for our families with young children here today. I would remind you on the black card in the back of the sanctuary, there are books and coloring pages and activities that you may make use of there. And following our children's message this morning, um, Elaine and Patty will be glad to take the children ages 4 through 11 down to Curious with Christ. Today, we continue our stewardship worship series titled, A Place at the Table. This series was inspired by the prayer that we offer prior to coming to Holy Communion, called the Great Thanksgiving. On this All Saints Sunday, the Feast of Grace has been prepared for us in the presence of the great cloud of witnesses, all those who have gone before us in life and in faith, all of the children of God, heirs of life eternal. May we worship as those who know our place in Christ's reign, both here on earth and in our eternal home. So later in the worship service, we will be sharing together the sacrament of Holy Communion. For those who are worshiping with us from home, you may want to have some elements, bread and juice available and waiting for you so that you too may participate fully in the sacrament. But now we continue our time of worship together by exchanging signs of peace and love. You may remain seated or stand as you are able and share with one another a holy wave or a sign from my heart to yours as we exchange those sentiments. <laughs> and
And let's turn and face the cameras in the back of the sanctuary and greet folks watching from afar by saying, Praise God! Praise God. Amen. And you may be seated. Molly will offer to us our centering music that we may focus our thoughts, our minds, our souls on this time of worship. As you are able, would you please rise for the call to worship that is responsive and printed in your bulletins, and I would ask you to respond out loud where you see the bold print. We remember, O oh God, we remember, O oh God, Remember, O oh God, we remember, O oh God, We remember in every time and place the saints of God who have shown us Christ's love. Our hymn of praise, our opening hymn, which is very traditional for All Saints Sunday, is for all the saints found in the United Methodist Hymnal on page 711.
You may be seated. The first reading is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. See what love the Creator has given us, that we shall be called children of God, and that is what we are. <clears throat> the reason in the world does not know us is that it did not know God. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When Christ is revealed, we will be like Christ, for we will see Christ's sacred reality and all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as Christ is pure. And from Matthew 5, 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the peaceful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Dick. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Come on up and have a seat. You weren't the only one. <laughs> Good morning, how are you today? Good, would you like to sit down with us here? Do you have any photo albums at home? Uh, you know, a lot of us don't have as many photo albums around in this day and age as we used to because our pictures that we would put in a photo album are on our phones instead of being printed out and put in a photo album. But I brought a couple of very special photo albums here for you to look at. These are photo albums from churches. This one is from this church. It's a few years old, so people look a little different now, and there are some different people out there too. But let me show you some of the people in here. Can you see all those pictures? Hey, I Black and white. Do you? I bet your kitty cat was very happy on Halloween. That's kind of Black Cat Day. Do you have a white cat? I have a black cat. I have a my kitty cat is white and black. Wow, that is special. Do you recognize those people? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Hey, my kitty cat has green eyes. Green eyes, wow. The end. You can see in here, they're not only pictures of people that we know and love, but some of their pets, too, like that kitty cat that you saw, and there's, there are puppy dogs in here. And I have a kitty cat at my house, but my actually kitty cat is uh, an inside kitty. Yeah, mine is, too. That's a good idea. Look, there's Larry. He's sitting right there. There he is, and he's here in our photo album. Let me show you some of them. Oh, you want me to see that again? Okay. Okay, show me. Yes, I know those people, and you do too. <laughs> there are... They look very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it nice to have pictures of people we love in here? But you know what? 
Take a look at this precious guy here. Don't you love his smile? Doesn't he? Yep, that Miller, that's Bob Miller. He passed away a few weeks ago. So he's not sitting in the congregation anymore, and he's not even watching us on his iPad like he did for a long time. But do you know that like a lot of other people that have passed away, he has gone to heaven and he's one of those clouds in the cloud of witnesses that we talk about. So it's kind of like he's here with us anyway, even though he has passed away. How about that? So we have pictures of people who come to church regularly, pictures of people that we don't see very often, and pictures of people who have passed away. That's Lorraine. You want to wave, Lorraine? There, she's sitting right out there. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't she have a friendly smile too? Yeah. Yes. These, yes, they do. On All Saints Sunday, which is today, we remember all of those special people around us who share God's love with us. And those are sometimes the people we live with, sometimes the people we see in church, sometimes they're the people who have already passed away, but still had shown God's love to us while they were here or helped this church to be the church it is today, full of love and beautiful music and reading from the Bible, sharing God's word. That's what All Saints Sunday is all about recognizing how God touches us through the years. So we give special thanks for all those saints, both the ones who have passed away and the ones who are with us, and probably even some saints we haven't met yet. Isn't that wonderful? So let's pray together. Thank you, God, for the saints, those who share love, those who share ministry, and those who are learning about you. Help us, please, to be your saints, too. Amen. And thank you for coming up today. Would you like some treats? And then you can go to Curious with Christ. There are so many to choose from. That one? Okay, that looks like a good one. There you go. Would you like a second one? You can take two also. There you go. All right. Enjoy and have fun at Curious with Christ, okay? Well, if you could see those ladies standing up there, they will t take you to, it's like Sunday school, okay?
Thank you, choir. That was beautiful. So are there any children of God worshiping here today? Raise your hand if you're a child of God. All right. I'm glad you have that identity. For those of you that didn't raise your hands, you might want to pray about that. <laughs> so we have all these children of God here amongst us. Do we have saints amongst us as well? If you're a saint, raise your hand. Oh, we're not quite so sure about that. Thank you for raising your hand, Larry. Contrary to the popular Christian idea that saints are only the very, very, very good people among us, our understanding based on scripture, particularly some of Paul's writings, is that a saint is anyone who is baptized and who believes in Jesus. So now, let's do that test again. How many of you believe that you are saints? There we go, there are more hands. And if you didn't raise your hand, you wanna pray about that one too. We need to practice thinking of ourselves as saints. I bet we don't think about ourselves as saints very often. Most of us were raised in a culture where we received more criticism than praise. And so the understanding that we are sinners became much more prevalent in our lives. I am asking you to intentionally turn that around. Martin Luther, the wonderful theologian, described Christians as simultaneously saints and sinners, made in God's image while not quite able to live fully into God's goodness and mercy. I've heard other people say that we as human beings are a strange mixture of saints and sinners, knowing that as followers of Jesus, we are trying to be faithful in our discipleship and to be Christ-like in our living, but we mess it up from time to time. We fall short of God's glory, and we end up needing to repent and receive forgiveness so that the balance will tip back toward the saint side once again. All Saints Day is like a family reunion of all of the saints and sinners who have ever lived, the children of God. The whole Christian community connects through the past, the present, and the future as we remember and give thanks for all the faithful who have gone before us, and we delight in the new siblings in Christ who have joined us more recently through the sacraments of holy baptism. No doubt some of us bring pain in our hearts and souls to this family reunion. People always do. Some of our favorite saints are no longer with us. Some are mourning a friend, a spouse, a child, someone whose inspiration and encouragement meant a great deal to us, helped us to become who we are today. Some are not mourning a single person in particular, but rather the great sum of losses that have piled up over the years and caused a heaviness in our hearts. And we come to our reunion rightfully with that heaviness or with that mourning mixed with gratitude. And it is right to bring the complexity of all of those feelings to this reunion. Know that we honor in particular all who are still very present among us, those who continue to influence our lives, whether it is through their physical presence 
or through our memories of them. Matthew's Gospel, which Dick shared with us today, tells about Jesus talking to people and about people who are blessed, but may not always feel that way. You know, as I do, that we are blessed to be in each other's company here and with those who are worshiping with us online, those who are mourning, those who are working hard to bring peace, those who are in trouble for not living as Jesus would have us to live. We need to be together. We need to be a people of grace. We need to be those who are working for peace. We need to be sharing God's love with all those who don't feel very loved right now. And we need to recognize that that cloud of witnesses, those saints who have gone before us, are with us on this journey of life and faith. And all around us, Seen and unseen are those saints who are a part of our family, whether we knew them intimately or not. They are the great cloud of witnesses. Those in our family photo album, as you might call it, our church directory, some of them we have never met, but yet... They have been a part of making this family what it has been and what it is today and what it will be in the future. From Mother Teresa to our own mothers and grandmothers, from John Wesley to our own sons and brothers and spiritual friends, on this All Saints Sunday, we delight in our family reunion with all of God's children in every time and place. Blessed saints, everyone. Now let's look ahead. When Jesus told those folks who are listening to, were listening to him about how blessed they were, even in the midst of their trials and tribulations, he was speaking to us too. So what do you see in this family's future or the, in the future of the church? And by that I mean the whole church worldwide. I also mean the United Methodist Church, our chosen denomination in this country and elsewhere. I also mean in this congregation of St. Paul's United Methodist Church. And I mean the future for each unique saint and sinner worshiping among us this day. What do you see ahead of us? And how might we steer toward or away from that vision of the future? Now look inside of yourself, yes, deep into your heart and soul. How are you? Really, how are you? And I'm not going to tell you how I am today because I'd be a puddle all over the floor. So anyway, let's be honest with ourselves because, you know, God knows we can't hide what's in our hearts and souls from God. God knows how we are. What is working what is not working, what is broken, what is healing beautifully, what is aching for more attention. How can we nurture each other in the process of healing? Now look around you. Yes, you are allowed to make eye contact with other people in this room. Look around you. Whose struggle calls to you? What kinds of news stories break your heart or make you mad? How might that pain be addressed? With whom is God inviting you or us 
to be in relationship? And how are we honoring or ignoring that invitation? All of these are important questions and good to consider at any time, but I think it is especially good to explore those questions and explore what is in our hearts and souls at this time of the year. Because in the midst of growing darkness, the light of Christ shines ever more brightly. Beginning this afternoon, we will notice the darkness more profoundly. Because you all were here on time, so I'm assuming you set your clocks back last night, which means the darkness of evening will come earlier today. Will those seeking inspiration, the inspiration of the saints, find the beam of Christ's light in us, a light that defies the darkness? Will they find God's love reflected through our eyes, being shown forth in our actions, being spoken in our words, offering wisdom for the ages, so that those who felt unworthy of God's love will feel a divine embrace? How will God be working through us? Rejoice in God's saints, my friends. Rejoice, because we are saints too. We not only have learned from those who have gone before us, we not only have received their love, but we've been given an ample supply to share with one another and all those in need. So rejoice in God's saints, and I pray that God will rejoice in all of God's children. Amen. May we continue our worship together by singing our hymn of response, Blessed Are They. It is found in the Faith We Sing hymnal on page 2155. Spirit, 
may be seated. As we celebrate the saints who have gone before us, we also remember their generosity in supporting the ministries of the church. They modeled for us putting faith into action through their giving. I pray that those of us who follow will also be inspired by their generosity. You may make your offering today in a variety of ways. For those worshiping here in this room, our ushers will be delighted to receive your donations as the offering plates are passed. For anyone else in this room or otherwise, you may always make your donation by using the donate link on the church's website or by mailing your offering to St. Paul's United Methodist Church. And as we share our gifts, Molly will bless us with another piece of music. It on. There we go. As we prepare to come to the Lord's table, we will share together that prayer of which I have been speaking the last couple of weeks, the Great Thanksgiving. Some of that is printed in your bulletins. And you will notice that we will be singing our favorite responses, um, which are in the Faith We Sing hymnal on page 2257. So you may want to have that ready for those sung responses. 
we will also, during the great thanksgiving, be naming the saints for whom we are especially grateful because they are folks connected with this congregation who have passed away in the previous year. And there will be a short time of silence when you may offer to God silently in your hearts the names of other saints for whom you are grateful. And as we name each of them, I would um, remind you of the symbols of their eternal life that we have before us. The pink, or excuse me, the white rose representing the purity of Christ. A bell will toll after each name so that you will remember that the bells of heaven certainly ring on our behalf. And after all of the names have been read, the Christ candle will be lit as well. When the names are read, if this is someone near and dear to you or someone you have known, someone who has influenced your life, you may stand or raise a hand or offer a silent prayer of gratitude. So, may the God of saints and sinners be with you. Join me in glorifying our God. Let us bless our God at all times. You stood before chaos, God of all time, and called all that is good and beautiful into being. Wiggly worms tilling the rich soil, Owls watching over the gathering dusk, butterflies flittering through the gardens. You created humanity in your image, the spirit breathing life into our lungs. And so we could live with you and in all of creation's wonder. Hearing our souls cry out to you, you sent the prophets to us to remind us that we were your children. But we continued to fall and fail, worshiping the false gods of hopelessness. So you sent Jesus to us to reveal you to us as the one who will redeem us from ourselves. Therefore, we join our voices with those of every time and place, joyfully singing our thanksgivings to you. who wipes away all tears, and blessed is Jesus Christ, the Lamb, who is our shepherd. Rich in your glory and honor, he came to bless the poor in spirit. Word by which creation's life came forth, he came to comfort all who stand at gravesides. Exalted by all the choirs of heaven, he came to give the meek their heritage, emptying himself of all that he might claim. He came to feed us with your righteousness. Compassionate beyond all imagination, 
He came to offer mercy to all he encountered. True Prince of Peace, he came to share that gift with God's children. Persecuted for being God's righteousness, he came to bring God's kingdom into our midst. Reviled and crucified on the cross, he offered us that resurrection which is great in heaven. On the night that he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, and again he returned thanks to you and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Knowing that what we will be has not yet been revealed, but trusting that we will be like Christ, we join all the saints in proclaiming our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. what great love has been given us here at the table where the feast of joy has been prepared for all of God's people the spirit comes upon the gifts of bread and cup and upon all who hunger and thirst for righteousness as we eat of this bread we will taste God's goodness as we drink from this cup we will see God's hope Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those we name before you. Eugene Bartel. Ardith Bennett. Reverend Warren Covell. Dorothy Davidson. David Hall. Glenna Margaris. Robert Miller. Dorothy Scott. Reverend Arthur Swartout. Marion Vandeveld. and those whom we name in our hearts. And when we gather with those from every nation, those from all tribes and peoples and languages, we will fall on our faces worshiping and praising you, God and community, holy in one.
children of God, may we join our voices together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Broken though we may be, Christ came to make us whole. This is the cup of blessing, a covenant reminder of eternal life for all of the children of God. In just a couple of moments, we will be inviting everyone to receive the sacrament. That's right, everyone is invited and everyone is welcome at the table of Christ's grace. As you come forward via the center aisle, you will have an opportunity to choose either the vegan gluten-free bread to dip in the juice or prepackaged elements, some regular elements and some gluten-free, and they are labeled for you. And you may return to your seats then via any of the side aisles. If you are unable to come forward, we'd be happy to serve you in your seat, or um, someone sitting next to you may bring the communion elements back to you. And when it is not our turn to be in line, I would remind you to offer those prayerful words of thanks to Almighty God for the precious saints that we have been blessed to share time with on this earth and who have created a legacy of God's love among us. Will the servers please come forward? The feast is prepared. Come when you are ready. This is the body of Christ given for you.
doing God's work gets messy sometimes. My um, bunny Gabriel would be telling me that I need his little whisk broom to clean that up. So we'll do that later. Would you unite your hearts with mine in prayer? Oh God, you call us to be your saints on earth, not worthy, but redeemed by Christ's sacrifice. You send us out to be servants of Christ with those in need, not due to superiority, but with great love. Your spirit accompanies us on this journey to encounter those who have lost their way and seek your face. May we show forth our family heritage in Christ to all. Amen. As you are able, would you please stand and sing our closing hymn, number 708 in the United Methodist Hymnal, Rejoice in God's Saints. seated. You are cordially invited to join us for fellowship time in the memorial room following the worship service today. We will have some wonderful goodies and the conversations will of course be enriching to each of our lives. Just a reminder, we're always looking for folks to bring treats for our fellowship time. If you would like to do that, you could let Jamie Breedlove Crouch know that so that she can count on your donation. I'd also remind you to make sure to admire the beautiful artwork on the back wall of the sanctuary, as well as out in our Welcome Center. Some of our amazing artists have shared their work with us to brighten our day and remind us of the beauty of God's creation. Please remember to support our two ongoing mission projects, one with the village at Ithaca. This month we are collecting liquid dishwashing detergent and paper towels. And also with the neighborhood blue cabinets. Please bring in non-perishable food items, personal hygiene items, cleaning products for the blue cabinets to help those in need in the neighborhood. Our reading group book study continues um, now with session two tomorrow evening at seven o'clock on Zoom. I know that there are a couple people who couldn't make it last week, but if you perchance wanted to participate and did not receive a Zoom invitation, you may see Karen in the back of the sanctuary following the service. Next Sunday, on November 12th, we will bring our stewardship emphasis for this fall to a close, and that means we will be dedicating our pledges. 
Most of you have received a letter concerning making a pledge to the church um, in the mail, but our lists are not perfect. So if you have not received one but would like one of those letters, there are extras in the church office right outside the door here, and we would be glad to share those with you. We are getting ready to send out our Advent Christmas Epiphany, in other words, winter, um, newsletter. And if you have anything you would like to contribute for the newsletter, news of events that are happening or invitations you would like to share, please get those items into D in the office by a week from tomorrow. So that's by November 13th. And for your calendars for planning ahead, please put um, the ACT area congregations together, Thanksgiving interfaith service on your calendar for Sunday, November 19th. That's the Sunday prior to Thanksgiving. And that will be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon at St. Catherine's Church. There are more details about that in your bulletin and more will be coming along as that date draws closer. Would you now receive the dismissal with blessing? We are blessed to be God's children, blessed in the midst of God's love, blessed in the midst of the world, blessed to serve with joy. Even in times that are hard, we are blessed to know that we are children of God. Go forth and speak about those blessings. Go forth and engage in action to bless others. Go forth with God. Amen. Mm -hmm.